This video goes over sample space diagrams, which is just another way to organize the outcomes of an experiment um, different than a Venn diagram. So a sample space diagram, which is also called a probability space diagram, is just another way of showing all the possible outcomes of an event. Uh, you can list all the probabilities as long as there aren't too many. For example, uh, this is a sample space diagram of the outcomes of rolling two die. So you could roll one, one. You could roll one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, and one, six. Same thing if you roll a two. And you can fill in all of the probabilities or possibilities here. Uh, two, six. Uh, you should start to see some patterns emerging as you fill in all the possibilities in this sample space diagram. 4, 4. But as you can see, this does have its limitations. Obviously, if you had too many possibilities uh, or too many outcomes, this method is challenging and a little bit time consuming to write down all the probabilities. Okay, uh, if two dice are rolled, find the probability of rolling doubles. So let's circle those here. So where are my doubles? So one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, and six, six. So my probability of rolling doubles would be six, over 36 or 1 sixth. Now, what about rolling a sum of four? So I'm going to circle those in green. Let's see. 1 and 3 add to 4. 2 and 2 add to 4. 3 and 1 add to 4. And so I've got 3 out of 36 or 1 twelfth. That's my probability of rolling a sum of four. My last one is rolling a sum greater than 10. So let's do those in red. So where am I greater than 10? So 5n, here's sort of the, the diagonal row that's going to equal 10. So the only way for me to score more than 10 would be 1, 2, 3. So to roll a sum greater than 10, I would have 3 out of 36, or 1 twelfth again. So it's nice because you can count your outcomes and then determine your probabilities from there. Let's look at another example. In an experiment, a coin is tossed and a dice is rolled. Draw the sample space diagram for this experiment. So that's going to be our chart below. Find the probability that in a single experiment you obtain a tail and a number greater than or equal to three. So let's fill in one head, one tail, two head, two tail, three head, three tail, four head, four tail, five head, five tail, six head, six tail. So what we want is the probability that we're gonna roll a tail and we're gonna get a value that's greater than or equal to three. So on the bottom, I'm gonna put my total number of outcomes, so that's 12. And now I'm looking for all the ones where I get a tail and it's greater than three. So my tails already restrict me to the bottom row. And then I've got one, two, three, four possibilities where I'm going to roll a tail or greater than three and that's going to simplify to my probability of one third. Okay. This is going to lead us into the product rule for independent events which is another item to consider when you are solving equations. When a dice is rolled and a coin is tossed, the events are considered to be independent because they don't influence each other, which is an important criteria when you're thinking about uh, events. So we have 
let's let h represent the event that the coin is heads here. So we have our probability is going to be 6 over 12, which is 1 over 2, okay, in our dice and coin experiment here. Then if we let L represent uh, that the dice is less than 3, we've got our probability here. Less than 3 would be 4 possibilities, so 1 third. So now we want to figure out what's the probability of heads and greater than 2. We can actually just multiply those two. What do I have? Oh, greater than 2. Did I get the right number here? Represent that the dice is going to be greater than 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Whoops. So we should have 8 here. So we've got probability that the dice is going to be greater than 2 happens 8 times, uh, which would be 3 quarters. So we can actually just multiply those two together, making sure you're using the right values. So we've got 1 half times 3 quarters, which would be 3 eighths. So I'll write the note on the next page. So, the, so we can note that two events are independent if the occurrence of one does not, I'll stop writing because it's down there, uh, they're independent if the occurrence of one does not affect the chance that the other occurs. If they're independent, then this is true. That is all about sample space diagrams and connecting to independent events. And then okay, we're going to look at one more example, just applying this rule that if A and B are independent, the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So if one bag contains three red and two white balls, I have another bag with one red and four white, find the probability that both balls are white. So the probability that we get a white out of our first bag is going to be two out of five. The probability that we get a white in our second bag is going to be four out of five. The probability that we get a white in both bags is we're going to multiply those two together because they are independent events. Picking out one ball doesn't influence uh, the next ball. So we've got 8 out of 25. Okay. The next situation that we're going to look at is how do we figure out the probability of getting uh, balls that are different colors. So the two groups would be white in the first bag and then red in the second. Or we would have red in the first bag and white in the second. So if we have white in the first bag, that chance is 2 out of 5. And we're going to multiply by the chance that we get a red in our second bag. So 1 out of 5 for a total probability of 2 out of 25. Our second situation here, red in the first bag, would be 3 out of 25 times the white in our second bag, which would be 4 out of 25, giving us a total probability of 12 out of 25. Now to get our total, so the probability that the balls are different, is we're going to add those two together. So 2 out of 25 plus 12 out of 25 is going to give us oops, a total of total of 12 out of 25, which gives us a probability that they're different of 14 out of 5, so just over half. So the last one that we're looking at is the probability that at least one ball is red. So your first way to look at it would be to consider the three different situations where you could get one red ball. So that would be red in both bags plus uh, the probability that you get red first and white second 
plus the probability that you get white first and red second. That's not too bad. We've already calculated the probabilities that the balls are different colors. So really we just have one more ball to calculate or one more probability to calculate. Uh, the more straightforward way is to take a look at the information that you've already calculated. I know that the four probabilities in my situation are both red, red first, white second, white first, red second, and the last one is going to be that they're both white. Those are my four situations. So I can actually write it like this. Probability that one ball is red is going to be one minus the probability that both balls are white, which is what I've already calculated up here. So I'm gonna do one minus eight over 25, which is gonna give me 12 over 25. So you can try it out. If you calculate it uh, the same way, you should get the same answer if you go and you find out the probability that both balls are red.